Okay, so with this brain, we're looking at the dorsal aspect of the brain, and we're gonna look at a couple dural structures that we have to be aware of. So here, this thick covering is the dura mater, and this thickening or fold of dura that we see running right down through here. If I peel the uh, dura back, we can actually see it's a fold of dura right here. This fold of dura projecting into the longitudinal cerebral fissure is going to be the Fox cerebri. Another fold of dura that we have to be aware of is this fold that's running right, kind of transversely right here between the caudal aspect of the cerebral hemispheres and the cerebellum. This is going to be the tentorium cerebelli membranaceum. That's a fold of dura running down in between or into the transverse cerebral fissure. If we flip this brain over and look at the ventral aspect, we can now see an intact pituitary gland or hypothesis right here. If we open the dura up, we can actually see some vascular tissue right kind of on each side of that pituitary gland, and that is gonna be kind of that network of veins, as well as the rostral epidurali, reti mirabili epidurali, okay? So the reti mirabili epidurali is again, some of this arterial network that is around this pituitary gland. Now, if we look, there's also another fold of dura right here being indicated by the probe that's running kind of around and enveloping the pituitary gland. That is the diaphragma cellae. So those are some of the dural structures that we need to be aware of. And the next thing we're gonna look at is a dorsal view of the cerebral hemispheres. And if we look at this dorsal view, these green pens are indicating the gyri or the little mounds of tissue that are present on the cerebral hemispheres. The, green, the white structures are in kind of the little valleys or divots, and those are the sulci in between the gyri. So the gyri are the mounds and the sulci are the divots or valleys. The blue pins are in or indicating the longitudinal cerebral fissure, which would be or be holding the Fox cerebri, or the Fox cerebri would be projecting into that fissure. Next, we're going to look at the ventral aspect or a few structures on the ventral aspect of the brain. So here we're looking rostral to caudal. So these pink pens are indicating the olfactory bulbs, which are gonna be the area that the phyla olfactoria are going to be connecting to. The olfactory bulbs then lead to the olfactory peduncles, which are indicated by, in orange here. And from the olfactory peduncles, we have the lateral olfactory tract in red and the medial olfactory tract indicated in white. This enlargement we see right here, kind of the ventral aspect of the teal encephalon or the cerebral hemisphere is the part of the Rhine encephalon, specifically the piriform lobe. So the green pins are indicating the piriform lobe. Now this sulcus or this groove that's just dorsal to the piriform lobe is a part of the rhinal sulcus that's separating the Rhine encephalon or nose brain from the rest of the telencephalon, or cerebrum. Here we can also see the optic nerves, or essentially some little cut pieces of the optic nerve, which would be leading to the optic chiasm, what's indicated in purple here. And then from the optic chiasm, radiating dorsally are going to be the optic tracts. Just caudal to the optic chiasm, is this yellow pin which has been placed into the infundibular recess. Okay, you can call this the infundibulum for our purposes, but technically this opening here that the yellow pin is within is the infundibular recess. Just caudal to the infundibular recess or infundibulum is going to be the area of the mammillary bodies, this little projection just caudal to the infundibulum.
And just call to that is this little fossa, this little depression right here, and that is the interpeduncular fossa. The interpeduncular fossa is between the two cruciferi. Now the blue pins here are, have been stuck through this nerve. And this cranial nerve is cranial nerve three, or the oculomotor nerve, originating from the mesencephalon, so the area of where the cruciferi are. As we continue to move caudally, we will encounter the area of the pons, where those transverse fibers will be radiating dorsally through the middle cerebellar peduncle to get to the cerebellum. While we're here, the cerebellum has a couple different parts. We have the central vermis and the two cerebellar hemispheres flanking the vermis. If we open that area up, we can now see the rostral and caudal colliculi. And we'll look at those on a, on a different brain stem. So let's go back, let's reorient. So we again have the area of the pons. Just caudal to the pons, we have these kind of transversely oriented areas. Those are the trapezoid bodies. And then we have these more longitudinally oriented structures right here, which are the medullary pyramids. Part of the medulla oblongata, which is all part of the myelencephalon. The pons is the area of the metencephalon. So let's look at a few more structures on this brainstem. So what we have here is essentially a brainstem that the cerebral hemispheres have been removed. So the internal capsule, which would be connecting right here, has been transected, allowing the cerebral hemispheres to be removed from this brainstem. Here we can see the optic tract leading directly up to this pink pin, which is the area of the lateral geniculate nuclei. Just caudal to the lateral geniculate nuclei is the area of the yellow pin. Those would be the rostral colliculi. And just ventral to that or caudal to it is where the caudal colliculi are located. The white pin has been placed in the area of where the cerebral, or I'm sorry, the cerebellar peduncles would be located. So those connections between the cerebellum and the ventral aspect of the metencephalon. The green pins are in the area of the fourth ventricle and would be denoting the rhomboid fossa. So the rhomboid fossa is the floor of the fourth ventricle and running right down through the middle of the rhomboid fossa in a median plane would be the median sulcus. If we flip this brainstem over, again, we can see the area of the pons right here. And from that, now we can see this small nerve originating from this, essentially the area of the pons, and that is going to be the abducens nerve. So cranial nerve six. So we've seen cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. Cranial nerve two, the optic nerve. Cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve. And cranial nerve six, the abducens. So let's see if we can find one that has the trochlear nerve or cranial nerve four still intact. And cranial nerve four or the trochlear nerve is unique because it's the one cranial nerve that's originating from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Okay, so on this brain, we can see the remnants or what's left of the trochlear nerve or cranial nerve number four. And again, a unique little tidbit about the trochlear nerve or cranial nerve number four. It originates from the mesencephalon, and it's the only cranial nerve that originates from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. So usually you'll see it kind of tucked up underneath the cerebellum. Just caudal to the trochlear nerve, we have this little nubbin of tissue right here, this little mound of tissue. And that's actually the remnants of the trigeminal nerve or cranial nerve five. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to some of the structures that you can see on a hemisected brain. So we're looking, essentially this brain right here has been cut down through the longitudinal cerebral fissure and through the vermis of the cerebellum, which it now allows us to see some medial structures to the brain and brainstem. Here, the yellow pins are indicating the corpus callosum. The rostral most of these would be the genu of the corpus callosum. The middle would be the body. And the caudal most bend back here would be the splenium. So genu, body, splenium of the corpus callosum. The red pins are indicating the fornix. The green here would be indicating the interthalamic adhesion, which is a part of the thalamus. It's kind of circular in shape, and the area around it would be the third ventricle. Now, if we look in between the fornix and corpus callosum here, we see the area of the lateral ventricle. So it's just this space within the cerebral hemisphere. If we look inside that space, right in the rostral floor, we see an area of gray matter. We see it outlined right here. It's a little bump of gray matter in the rostral floor of the lateral ventricle. And this is the area of the caudate nucleus. What has been done to this next brain is essentially the next brain I show is a transected view. So a, a section has been removed with the knife coming right down through here, setting up this aspect. So the rostral most portion of the cerebrum has been removed. And if we look at this transverse section, now we can see the area of that gray matter, which is the caudate nucleus right here. And just dorsal to that, we have some area of white matter. These little radiating structures of white matter are the corona radiata, or the white matter of the cerebrum. If we then look, again, at this medial aspect, we see this lateral ventricle right here. We have the corpus callosum in yellow. Within this area is the lateral ventricle, and there's an opening between the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle where the probe is being passed through right now, which is the interventricular foramen. So cerebrospinal fluid is made within the lateral ventricle, flows through the interventricular foramen, and into the area of the third ventricle. Cerebrospinal fluid can then move from the third ventricle through the area indicated in black here, which is the mesencephalic aqueduct, and pass into the area of the fourth ventricle, which is this area ventral to the cerebellum. This is just another view showing the area of where the third ventricle would be. This little piece of tissue right here just dorsal to the rostral colliculus is the pineal gland or epiphysis cerebri. Again here the green pins are showing the area of the mesencephalic aqueduct which would be connecting to the fourth ventricle. If you look really close you can see this literal little flap of tissue right here at the rostral end of the fourth ventricle. This little bitty flap delicate flap of tissue is the rostral medullary velum or vellum. It kind of helps form the roof of the fourth ventricle. Since we're here, let's look a little bit at the cerebellum itself. The pink pins have been placed within this white matter of the cerebellum, and that is indicating the arbor vitae, tree of life. It's the white matter deep to the cerebellar cortex. And then all these tiny little folds into the cerebellar cortex are what we call the folia. 
Okay, for this view, what has been done is this left cerebral hemisphere has been removed by transecting the internal capsule, allowing us to see some of these structures that are kind of present within that lateral ventricle. So we're looking into the area of the lateral ventricle and we can see some of this kind of vasculature, vascular looking stuff in here, kind of has a coffee ground appearance to it due to the blood that was in there. This is some of the choroid plexus. So that is what's going to be producing the cerebrospinal fluid within the ventricles. Here we can also see, if we look here, we can see the area of the fornix right here. And the fornix actually extends, that's this white matter that we see Get that choroid plexus out of the way. This white matter that we see extending ventrally is the fornix. Now this gray matter that you see attaching directly to the fornix is the hippocampus. So hippocampus is gray matter, fornix is white matter. You can also see that if you kind of peel up the caudal aspect of the fornix, you kind of see this little bump running along the caudal aspect within kind of the caudal aspect of the lateral ventricle along the fornix. Again, this is the hippocampus. In my opinion, it's just easier seen from out here because you can actually see the gray matter that's contacting the fornix. Now we're gonna move on to a little bit of vasculature. There's not a whole lot that we have to be aware of here, but we are gonna take a look at some of these structures. So here we actually have an equine brain that has been removed, allowing us to see, if we're looking ventrally, we can actually see half of where the cerebral arterial circle or circle of Willis is located. From that cerebral arterial circle, we would have a vessel coming up kind of the medial aspect or the median aspect, which would be the rostral cerebral artery. We then have this artery that's running on the lateral aspect up towards the area of the cerebral hemisphere. That is the middle cerebral artery. And finally, we have this very large artery that's running up kind of the caudal aspect of the cerebrum. And that is going to be the caudal cerebral artery. We can also see the presence of this rostral cerebellar artery running up to the rostral edge of the cerebellum.